Thank you, Cal, and good morning, everyone. Let's do some singing now, number 737, Like a River Glorious. Let's stand and sing. Please remain standing for our call to worship found in the bulletin. This is taken from Psalm 119. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. I pledge to follow your righteous commandments. Shall we pray? Good Shepherd, you hold us in your hand and we will never perish. We are loved with an everlasting love, clothed in righteousness. Our peace is flowing like a river, our comforts are many, our joy abounding. Our souls are lively with the knowledge of salvation and our standing with you is secure. With relief, we gather to worship. And we offer prayer in the name of our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in
Please be seated. Some of you are familiar with uh, Dr. Charles Stanley on TV, pastor of Baptist Church in Atlanta. Uh, he wrote our confession today. Let's read it together. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me enough to set limits on what I may and may not do. Grant me the wisdom to stay within the confines you have so wisely established. By sending Christ to die, you have assured me that you have my best interests in mind. I willingly surrender every area of my life with the assurance that in doing so, I'm guaranteed freedom. And now, if our kids will come forward, right up here to the front, we'll have our children's chat. All right, we got a good group today. Uh, does anybody have a favorite game? Just find a seat here or in the second row. What's your favorite game? The what? Turtles, okay. Uh huh. Okay, well, I'm glad that you explained that because when somebody says, Let's play a game, and, you, and you're not familiar with it. I, I didn't know that game. What's the first thing you want to know? Yeah, and what are the rules? Now, you know, have you ever played with somebody who wasn't playing by the rules? Now, I kind of like Scrabble. But you know what? Every now and then when you play Scrabble, somebody makes up words that really don't exist. <laughs> you know? Kind of ticks me off. You know, it's like, hey, wait a minute, Z-O-Y-X, that's 30 points. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't remember that word. What does that word mean? Well, I don't know, but it's a word. Whatever you want it to be, yeah, right. I want it to be 30 points. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, we have a rule book for us, and it's called the Bible. And sometimes life doesn't always work right. We need to go back and read the rules, read the instructions, because God has given us a rule book that will help us make life work better. Sometimes people look at rules as bad things. You know, like, you gotta clean your room once, once a day, you know, or whatever. But actually, you know, that's to help us, because you don't want to be a slob, right? Well, don't answer that. <laughs> and, you know, it, the Bible has a lot of commands. It's uh, 315 commands, I think that's right, isn't it 315, Jack, in the Old Testament? 315? Okay, I figured you would know that. Uh, and, and there's a lot more, there's even more in the New Testament. And, uh, you know, that's a lot to remember, but they are summarized. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Now that's a summary of the Ten Commandments, which are duties to God and duties to people. And if you think about it, that pretty much covers almost everything. Doesn't mean you don't need to learn the rest. But, you know, that's a good summary of the rules. Sometimes we don't have time to read, to, to mention all the rules, right? That could take a long time. Some rule books are big. Baseball, man, it's like that would take you two hours just to learn all the rules. But a summary of the rules is very simple, particularly the rules in the Bible. Love God, love others, and you'll do well. Okay, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we've got rules. Sometimes we don't like them and sometimes we don't play by them. But you've given us rules and when we break them, you still love us. Help us not to do that because we don't wanna make you unhappy. But help us, Lord, to find that life just works better when we follow the rules. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.
I know, I used to have a cordless microphone, but I don't anymore. Okay, uh, it's time to do some more singing, and let's count our blessings. We'll sing verses one and four. And on the fourth verse, our kids are dismissed for Creative Corner. Okay, let's take some time to pray. God, our King, who hears when we pray, we thank you that we can take our cares to the heavenly throne and gain an audience with the ruler of all. Sometimes we write letters to elected officials and sometimes we get no response. But you hear and you answer all our requests. You listen to us when others are too distracted to pay us much attention. We have your ear and we are blessed. Your purpose is never frustrated. You invite us to make our needs known and so this morning, Lord, we pray for those in great need. God of wonders, it's comforting to know that no matter what's going on in our lives, we know you care. And because you are good and know all, we trust your answers. And so we rest in your love and your great compassion. Amen. It's time to take our morning offering. About 10 years ago, people were saying, how come nobody writes good hymns anymore? And well, Keith Getty and Stuart Townen did something about it. Uh, they wrote a bunch, and this is probably their most famous hymn, In Christ Alone. I noticed the last time I was over at Blessed Sacrament, it's in their missalette, so our Catholic friends are singing it as well. You don't get to, you're gonna have to listen to the choir. No, you're gonna be tempted but the uh, choir is going to sing it as we take up our morning offering.
Please pray with me. Lord, our maker, regardless of our net worth, we are rich because you are rich in mercy. Even in an unstable market with financial volatility, we rest secure in your watch care. You make it possible for us to earn money, and we give a bit of it back to you. We also give you our lives and ask that you make us people who will make a difference where we live and work. For your glory. Amen. be seated. Let's read together today's spiritual discipline. Fasting, going without food or something else for a period of intense prayer, focusing on God and His will. Our fast may be complete or partial. Before we sing, as was mentioned, this Wednesday is Veterans Day, the 11th month, 11th day, and the 11th hour. And I would like for all veterans to please stand for a moment. All our veterans. And now we're going to sing. This is an interesting song. I learned it years ago. Uh, some of you may be familiar with Fernando Ortega, uh, a Hispanic singer. I, he didn't write this, I don't think, but he does a wonderful job of singing it. It's a difficult song because it's got a, quite a range. It starts out low and goes high. So we'll do the best we can, but I, it's a wonderful, wonderful song of praise. I think you probably know it. You've probably heard it before.
Today's scripture reading is from the book of Jude, verses 17 through 25, found on page 1910. A call to pers persevere. But, dear friends, remember what the apostles, our Lord Jesus Christ, foretold. They said to you, in the last time there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. Uh, these are the men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most ho holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them. To others, show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. Doxology. To keep him who is able, to him who is able to keep you who, who from talk, excuse me, from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault in the great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord, before all ages, now and forever more. Amen. Here ends this reading. Thanks, Patty. I appreciate it. And by the way, I made a mistake earlier. I had a handout for the kids, so parents, they're right there. It's just a little something to supplement the children's chat. So if you make sure your kid gets one of those afterwards, that would be good. Something they can work on this afternoon. So I got a question for you this morning. How secure do you feel? After you look at the news, you probably don't feel too secure some days. There's a story told about a monastery in Portugal perched high atop a 3,000 foot cliff and accessible only by a terrifying ride in a swaying basket. That sounds like a ride at Six Flags. <laughs> the basket is pulled up by a single rope with several strong men perspiring under the strain, yanking that thing up the, the side of the cliff. Well, there was an American tourist who wanted to visit the monastery and he was about to climb into the basket when he noticed that the rope looked a bit old and kind of frayed. Hoping that they would relieve his fear, he asked, how often do you change the rope? The monk in, that was in charge replied, oh, whenever it breaks. <laughs> One thing we can count on, we are safe 
and secure in God. Why? Because he loves us. He won't turn his back on us. He is committed to us. Even when life hurts, he has a plan for us. It's been said, when God ordains, he sustains. Christ completed a work for us on the cross. Uh, he began a good work in us, and he is going to carry it through. He's going to finish his work. We are in a process of spiritual growth. We're on a journey of faith headed towards a secure heavenly destination. Now, however, I have to say that a lot of Christians, sadly to say, do not have this assurance. They lack assurance of faith. Some of them feel that perhaps they could fall from God's grace. They have what I like to call eternal insecurity. John MacArthur observed, if you could lose your salvation, you would. We didn't earn heaven in the first place. Jesus earned it for us so we won't lose out. We're guaranteed heaven. Not based on what we've done, but what on Christ has accomplished on the cross. We can't lose something that we didn't earn. Heaven's an undeserved gift. Charles Spurgeon wrote, We are as safe as he in whom we trust. Well, in our scripture reading, Jude was writing to a people living in the depraved Roman Empire, a corrupt environment with a pagan worldview and lifestyle. Immorality was rampant. People rejected morality and authority, and they followed their base instincts. And you see this in verses 8 and 19. Jude was also writing to people who were vulnerable to false teachings. He warns of scoffers, of divisive people. Heresies abounded, and you know, they continue to abound. British author G.K. Chesterton wrote about just how twisted viewpoints had become in his native England. He said, today people boast with a self-conscious laugh, I suppose I am very heretical, and then wait for applause. Jude gives us his blessing, the comforting reassurance that we are eternally secure and safe. Once we are in Christ, we are in him forever. Nothing can sever us from his unconditional love. Now this doesn't mean that God lacks standards. There are standards, there are rules, but you know, he loves us even when we violate them. He takes us as we are, but he loves us too much to leave us that way. He changes our condition, our inclination. Nothing can change our status though. God is able to keep us from falling. We may stumble, but we will never fall beyond recovery. God will pick us up, get us back on track, and help us to learn from every single failure we make. And throughout our earthly journey, God helps us to avoid contamination, the contamination of this rather fallen world of ours. We are guarded by Jesus, and we will be forever kept by him. That's good news, to be sure. So, how does Jesus keep us from falling? with four resources. Number one, we're kept from falling by his word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee, Psalm 119, 11. The more we know the Bible, the harder it is to sin. The scriptures give us the light that we need to walk effectively to avoid pitfalls and to choose wisely. Secondly, we are kept from falling by the indwelling Holy Spirit. We have an inner motivation. We can sin, we just can't, can't enjoy it. When we do sin, we feel remorse. The, script, the Spirit equips us with 
the armor of God that guards us from the arrows of the devil. Do we have a firm enough hold on God? We don't have to worry about that when we realize who's doing the holding. Third, we are kept from falling by godly company. Our fellowship with other believers is like a support system. Those who are involved with Alcoholics Anonymous have sponsors that they can call on whenever they are tempted with self-abuse. AA got this concept from us, the church. We have battle buddies in our war with sin. Fourth, we are kept from falling through prayer. When we pray, lead us not into temptation, God will do that. He will always provide a way out, a means of escape. Now God knows our particular weaknesses and he can keep us from those things that, to which we're most vulnerable. He's also given us wisdom to know what we need to avoid. And this differs from person to person. Prayer keeps us close to our power source. Henry Nouwen wrote, Prayer is primarily a time of listening to the blessing. Now Jude tells us that we will be presented before God without fault. Well, how can that be? We've got plenty of faults. And yet, when we trust Christ, we are declared righteous. Our sin record is wiped clean by his blood. And the Holy Spirit seals the transaction. Salvation is a free gift of grace by faith. It says here in the text that we are also presented before God with joy. We rejoice in what God has given us. He created us in joy and for joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We need to tie our joy to the fact that we are kept by God. It may be true that not all joys lead to God, yet all joys come from God. So said Abraham Heschel. And there is more joy yet to come. Those already in heaven are happier than us, but they are no more secure. And so we pray for ourselves, for others, we confess our sins, we talk to God, all with the assurance that we are his children, that we belong to him, that he cares about us, and that he will keep us. Jude wants us to remain firm in our faith and daily walk, confident that our standing with God will never change. Jesus will preserve us. Our salvation is as secure as if we were already in heaven. We can get into that basket without fear. The rope won't break. We're not worried about falling. We are too busy being blessed. So may the Lord, mighty God, bless and keep you forever. Now let's sing number 596, I Surrender All. Let's stand and sing.
quarter to 12, kickoff is at one. You have time, you have time to stay for fellowship. The, uh, uh, the pregame party is right in there. <laughs> Tailgate party. Okay, let's pray. God Almighty, source of our blessedness, we thank you that our eternal condition is not based on our performance, but on your grace. The wages of sin is death, yet Jesus paid our way to life eternal. He paid it all. And having started a new work of grace in us, you will keep at it until we reach heaven's shores. And so, Lord, we face tomorrow with the assurance that you love and will lead us. And we depart in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Very kind of you. Let's sing our final amen now. 